And my experience of living the questions was to, to take a course or to lead a course really along with Graham Mall from the Wild Goose Resource Group and we did this as a a shared, a shared venture between Strathclyde University and, and Holy City. So we brought together some students, some staff, and some of the folks who were regular Holy City attenders. And I suppose my interest in coming into this was having done Alpha a few years before and really liking the format that people would come together to eat together, to meet and to share in discussion. But the, the theology of, of the Alpha course I was not comfortable with, but the format was good. So when I began to hear about living the questions, I thought here was an opportunity to engage in a format that I thought was, was really workable and positive but also to, to look at things from a very very open perspective and, and to live with the questions and not just to be giving people answers. In the same way that in churches at the moment people realise that different musical styles can be a barrier to how people worship and their engagement with God, I find that working with young people and being part of a church myself that the different ways of teaching or exploring who God is can be a barrier. In living the questions, there's an opportunity to try new things, to listen to different people's perspectives, and then also to discuss it, which seems to be countercultural for a lot of churches in the way that we are meant to listen to the preaching and accept what is said. Living the questions has enabled us to out people in many ways because we had a very traditional classical model in our own congregation and you imagine that people have always thought along traditional and classical lines but using Living the Questions and also Saving Jesus we discovered that a whole lot of people have been thinking more creatively and imaginatively for decades and have never had the opportunity to speak these things and discuss these things with others and so this opportunity has come along and people have come out in the woodwork and have said oh, I've never thought that or I've always thought that and I've never been able to question that before so faith has become a lot more alive and people have engaged far more in the bigger questions of faith which has been a real blessing to our congregation. Over the past year I've been working a lot with uh, young people and there's been a real danger for me in that people have been trying to give them one way of thinking you know this is right the Bible says it here's my Bible I will show you this is what it says therefore that must be the truth and if you disagree with that you're not a Christian or you're out or well sorry it's not really for you um, and for me that's dangerous it's not inclusive it's everything against what Jesus was all about from my understanding. And I have lots and lots of phone calls and people ring me up and say, hey Richard, I just didn't know about this. Why am I age 65 and now I've suddenly had my mind opened and expanded? The answer was living the questions. Living the questions uh, in a UK or Scottish context for a toolbox, particularly I think for lay people, um, one of the predominant features of a lot of, of a British church life is that we are still in hock to uh, the authority and the knowledge of uh, the clergy and feel a wee bit reluctant or ill at ease in offering our own opinions and, and the basic invitation to look at questions, to take them, to struggle with them, to toss them around needs lots of opinions and values the, all the opinions that, that folk have. Because we were bringing together some people who had been through the very evangelical experience of church, had come away from that, but wondered then what their theology was, what their thinking was. And I think doing the course gave them a wide open space to be honest about their doubts, about their questions, and to be honest about the journey that they were on. Here at St Luke's we've been really excited and pleased to find Living the Questions um, because as people come along to St Luke's sometimes they're people who have got a Christian background, they've got a deconstructed faith that they're trying to make sense of but also people who come who've got no real Christian connection at all um, but they're all kind of trying to make sense of it all and uh, you know, Sunday services are great, and, and, but there's a limit to, to what you can do in the context of a sermon spot there. And uh, so there's been a real hunger, I think, amongst people at St. Luke's for uh, a, a forum, a context in which they could explore, um, not having 
it's kind of handed down to them, but where they could themselves explore what the meaning of certain aspects of Christianity uh, is all about. So Living the Questions has come as a tremendous gift to us, and we are so thankful for um, these wonderful little films, you know, of all these uh, incredible and wonderful people who've spent, uh, you know, their professional life thinking and contemplating aspects of uh, of what Christianity means. One of the exciting things about the Living the Questions course is that you have the opportunity to hear from theologians who are willing to push back the boundaries, who have been pushing back the boundaries in their own thinking and they give other people the freedom and the wide open space to do the same and I think that's incredibly enriching and worthwhile. We've been involved with LTQ from its beginning in the States and then helping to bring it to this country and we think it is the most brilliant series of expressions of open faith understanding, both Living the Questions itself, Saving Jesus and the rest of the family, well worth getting hold of. One of the young men who's been coming to St Luke's Steve, uh, he's come along really to help cook the meal beforehand. Um, he's got no you know, kind of Christian background at all. And uh, he has just loved it. He's, and he's contributed in his own quiet way to, to the course as we've gone along. And uh, I think, you know, he's a good example of someone who's come from really no idea what he thought about Christianity to, to having a really very positive outlook and, and deciding that this is something that he wants to look at and explore for himself. Again, with me working with young people, I find that I can't always give all the answers because I don't have all the answers and I can't pretend that but there's a lot more value in me being able to say to them that I'm on the same journey as them. We may be at different places and have different questions but that those things are good. It does lay out all of these perspectives and then there's a chance to discuss. It's not anyone dictating what you should think, it's not telling people here's your opinion, here's my opinion, you have the same as me and then you can be accepted and then you can be a Christian. Um, it's, it's laying things open and then saying take from this what you will and let's talk about it and let's grow together and let's see where we both end up. So to be able to you know explore in this open uh, adventurous way a, a different perspective on Christianity is very exciting. It's critical thinking with warm heart with warm faith. Loving the questions helps us get closer to the issues that are thrown up um, by the actions of Jesus and the kind of consequences and struggles that the people who call themselves followers of Jesus have to deal with. And it articulates these. Many people feel the, the, the need to discuss these things or have opinions about them, but Living the Questions actually enables people to articulate a lot of stuff which has been silent for too long.